So I think people like hearing about uh, we're a local boutique type company. Yes, I think intellectually they like hearing that. However, if you have to sell your home, then <clears throat> you just want the most amount of money with the least amount of aggravation. And I don't know that, and I think whoever's in front of them and can convey that the best is going to win the deal. <clears throat> so, so let's look at the script here. <clears throat> um, so number two, so, so we're, we're thinking about X, or we've never heard of your company. So it's really simple. So and then you can just say, look, I can understand your concern. And I think you realize a company doesn't sell a home. It's the individual agent's activities. Do you feel I can sell your home? And they say, yeah. And they say, terrific. All we need to do now is, all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? And they go, yeah, then go sign the contract. So, in other words, you don't have to, you know, we don't have to go into a large litany of why. Just answer the question and then ask for the signature, period, right? Like, will you lower your commission? No. Do you have any other questions? Right? It's like, why Why do more than you need to, right? Just, just answer. So, because remember, an objection is simply um, – an, an objection is simply an unanswered question in the mind of a prospect. So if they ask the question, just simply answer it, right? So we think that telling them a whole litany of information is actually selling. And the truth is, sales is a series of questions that leads people to a decision, right? So, look, I can understand your concern. And I think you realize a company doesn't sell a home. It's the individual's agent's activities. Do you feel I can sell your home? <clears throat> so I, I gave it, you know, a, a, a one-sentence answer and then a question. <clears throat> you get it? So that's how you handle it. So who wants to – do you, let's, uh, you use that script with me, Vonda. So I'll say <clears> – <throat> I'll give you the objection. Uh, we never heard of – never heard of your – Vonda. Vonda, I never heard of your company. I can understand your concern. I think you realize a company doesn't sell a home. It's the individual agent's activities. Do you feel I can sell your home? Well, yeah, I do. <clears throat> Terrific. So all I need now is simply just have you signed this all, contract. So all, No, no, read the script. All we need to do now. All we need to do now is simply is. sign the contract. So... I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, here we go. Sign the contract. Sign right here, so, sign the contract. Right, use the word sign the contract, okay? okay? People want to dance around, let's just initial the agreement, let's, you know, enter into the, no, sign the contract. They, look, if you're on a listing appointment, right, they know they're going to sign a contract. They get it. So just go right for the jugular. That, believe me, a motivated seller appreciates a professional that simply says, sign the contract. This doesn't you make start. it more pushy sounding when you keep saying no. sign the contract. Did I, did I say, no, well, let's go through it again. Um, so listen, I'll just go through that last line. All we need, so Vonda, all we need to do now is simply sign the contract. So I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? Now, was that pushy? No, that's it's not just, pushy. I feel no, like if just, we come, go line by line, if I've already, if I've done the objection number one, and I say sign the contract, and then I go to objection, now they've got objection number two. Right. So you're that's telling you me to go ahead and You may build. get one or two. Okay. You may get one or two, maybe three objections, but that's okay. <clears throat> if you see you you're worried about being pushy, but the, what I what you missed the part where I said, <clears throat> um, well, maybe not. <clears throat> maybe I didn't say it right this time. But a motivated seller, see, an assertive salesperson is sweet music to a motivated seller. Makes sense. 
You know, in other words, it's only pushy if you sound pushy. <clears throat> so does that make sense? So, you know, there's mm -hmm. it, it, so let's do it again. So um, so Vonda, you know, we were thinking about going with ABC company. Had, um, okay, I can understand your concern, and I think you realize a company doesn't sell a home. It's the individual agent's activities that sell the home. Do you feel I can sell your home? Yeah. Um, yes, I do. Oh. All we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? Yeah, that'd be great. Sign the contract. Yeah, and the way I do the second one, I go, I go, and they say, and I go, won't that be great? And they say, yeah, I go, okay, great. I'll just go ahead and sign it. That's okay. <coughs> you know, and I say it that way. And I slide okay. the papers in front of them. <coughs> and again, <coughs> I'd rather you lose the deal. I'd rather you miss the listing by being assertive than being passive. Right. My passiveness has lost too many. <laughs> okay. Well, we just had this notion that sales is bad, right? So mm -hmm. we think of telemarketers and salespeople as bad. Well, we're, are you bad? No, you're not. You're a wonderful human being that has a heart to serve, but you cannot serve them until they sign the contract. Mm-hmm. They know why they're there. It's only the agent that has a problem with the contract. <clears throat> the seller knows they got to sign a contract. They already know that. Right. They want the right agent. Right. <clears throat> so you're re and so remember when you're on a listing appointment, you're on a sales audition appointment as well. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Mm hmm So the top salespeople in the country are just do, using these scripts, believe it or not. My, right. And the Mike Ferry organization, they have over 580 agents, right? Over 580, that's not, you know, that's huge. <laughs> and averaging, averaging over 580 agents, averaging 89 closed transactions a year. Average. Their average is 89 deals. <clears throat> so, and they're using these scripts. So let's not reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> so let me see, let me pick us out another one. So, or Richard, do you want to try this script? Sure. All right. So Richard, uh, you know, we've never heard of your company. Hey, Ram, <clears throat> excuse me. I can understand your concern, and I think you realize a company doesn't sell a home. It's the individual agent's activities. Do you feel I can sell your home? Uh, yeah, I do, Richard. Okay. Rob, all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Won't that be great? That'd be great. All right. Rob, sign the contract. Okay, perfect. See, see <clears throat> Richard, great job. I mean, you, you're, you're really, you're. Re I mean, Vonda's kind of newer to these scripts, so she's kind of like struggling with them a little bit. Also, Rich, Vonda, Richard went to this four-day class on these do on these scripts, and so he's kind of a little bit past them. <clears throat> so, but let me ask you a question, Vonda. How do you? How did that sound to you? That sounded great. Sounded convincing, yeah. confident. Uh, yeah, and, good. and it was just natural. Right. So it's only unnatural when you don't know the script. Right. So the the phrase, all we need to do now, I mean, I can say that you can wake me up out of a sound sleep and I can go right into all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. I mean, won't that be great? And they're like, yeah, <clears throat> great, sign it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> well, great job, Richard and Vonda, both of you. I mean, Vonda, you were doing good with those. It's just you can tell that it's not as familiar with you 
as other, you know, as what Richard did. Richard's been working on these every day. <laughs> but so now let's look at number four, right? <laughs> and I'll walk, I'll walk you through that one, right? So let's list high. We can always come down later. I understand you want to list high to leave room for negotiation. And have you considered the problem that creates for you? And they go, and they're like, what problem is that? Well, most people won't even bother looking at properties that are priced too high. Would you rather have a bidding war on your home or not have an opportunity to negotiate any offers at all? And they go like, well, I'd rather have a bidding war. Well, great. All we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? <clears throat> so, I mean, so, I mean, because we always get that one. Don't we have to leave room for negotiation? <clears throat> and the reality is you don't. You're better off pricing it where it needs to be, and then you'll, it, you'll actually net more money when you price it properly the first time out. When you, when you overprice a listing and it sits around on the market, say, three weeks, maybe three, four weeks, right, and especially in this market, then you adjust the price. Let's say the listing should be at 500, but you got it at 550 or five and a quarter, let's say 540, and nobody's looking at it. And then, and then a month goes by, then you adjust it to 500. Well, now you're showing signs of what appears to be desperation. So, but, and then and now the buyers are going to start offering you 475. Where if you would have listed at 500 from the beginning, and you would have created a, a, a flurry of activity, and a buyer would make you a full price offer in fear of losing out on the listing. So they would actually net more money by listing it properly from the day one. So, I mean, so you understand what I just said. So, and you can actually use that. I mean, so you can, so what I would do is I would just do the, the script here first. And then if they weren't, if they still objected, then I would go and explain in greater detail the way I just explained it. <clears throat> so who wants to do the script? I'll well, do it. Children. Let me ask you yeah, um, <laughs> go ahead. one more quick question so also with that in mind it seems that when you when the price is lowered then the buyers out yeah. there see that they feel like oh i can even go lower yet um because well, the, they're in desperation and if it was too high of a price it's not selling for whatever reason right so right if, it, you if, you, if you've been on a, if you've lowered the price and you've been on the market too long right so that's what i mean so that's what i meant by if you started out at 540 then you had to adjust it to get be where it should have been, then buyers now are saying, okay, they've been on the market a long time. There must be something wrong with this. They're getting desperate. So let's offer them 475. Right. <laughs> where okay. if it was a, a fresh listing at price properly, it's getting a flurry of activity. A motivated buyer is not going to lose out on that listing. They're going to just offer you full price or very, very close. But in turn, you would actually net more money the first time out. Right. So, well, Bonda, you know, I think we should list high because we can always come down later. I understand you want to list high to leave room for negotiating. And have you considered the problem that creates for you? Well, no. <clears throat> Most people won't even bother looking at properties that are priced too high. Would you rather have a bidding war on your home? or not have any opportunity to negotiate any offers at all? Well, I'd rather have a bidding war. Great. I uh, would like to, too. All we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? Oh, that'd be great. All right. Here's paperwork. Sign the contract. Okay. <clears throat> so... Resist the temptation to add to the script. Just resist right. it. <clears throat> so you're struggling with that. I want you, this isn't about, you know, because you, you have the temptation to add to it to make it sound personalized to you. The way you make it sound personalized to you is by internalizing it. When you internalize it and, you, and then it is now personal to you, it'll sound like you when you internalize it. Okay, so, all right, Richard, your turn. So, Richard, 
Um, you know, we, I mean, we, you know, we're, we should leave room to negotiate, don't you think? We can always list a little higher, but we can always come down later. Well, Rob, I understand you want to list higher. Excuse me, to leave room for negotiating. Have you considered the problem that creates for you? Well, no. Okay. Most people won't even bother looking at a property that are priced too high. Would you rather have a bidding war on your home or not have an opportunity to negotiate any offers at all? Well, I'd rather have a bidding war. Okay, Rob. All we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can get you, so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? Oh, that'd be great. All right. Here's the contract. Please sign. <laughs> yep. So, <clears throat> same thing. Don't add anything to it. Just okay. th this is a role play. This is an exercise. <clears throat> this, Got it. So, <clears throat> we're here to learn the script verbatim. Period. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> so, um, but you see how that just flows. I mean, that's just a, an, and it's a, just a natural conversation, <clears throat> right? It's not, you know, it's not a script, right? When you internalize them, it's no longer a script. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So I love the next one. So number five, um, we want to think it over. Well, that's great. And, since, you know, and this is assuming that there's um, um, a, a couple in front of you, right? So in other words, if you're talking to one person, you would say two minds are better than one. <clears throat> so that's great. And since three minds are better than two, Let's think out loud together. Tell me, what are you thinking about? <clears throat> so <clears throat> now my personal experience is 99 times out of 100, if they're telling you they want to think it over, it's because they don't like your price. That's just my experience. Because So, so think about it. A seller has two questions, right? And the other questions are pretty much what I call sub-questions of the first two major questions. So major question number one is how much money am I getting, right? That's what they want to know. And sub-questions are the list price, how much do you charge, things like that. Those are sub-questions of how much money am I getting. That's, what, that's, that's their primary goal. That's what they care about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then the second question they have is, can you get it? Right? And everything else is a sub-question of, can you get it? Right? What do you do to sell homes? Never heard of your company. They're, they have a little trepidation about whether you can get them the money or not. So, but my experience has been that when they throw out little objections, ah, we just want to think about it. That's just, they're blowing you off. They just... They just want to be nice. They don't want to say, look, we don't, you know, but again, my experience says they're struggling with the price. They're struggling with the price. So, so I would ask, so I would say, I would take it a little further and go, hey, that's great. And since three minds are better than two, let's think out loud together. So tell me, what are you thinking about? And if they start to hem haul a little bit, then I would go right into it and say, well, let me ask you, I mean, uh, based on the marketing strategy we just showed you, do you feel that I can sell your home? And they go, well, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so let me ask you another question. What is stopping you from signing a contract then if you feel I can sell your home? And they go, well, and I go, is it the price? Well, yeah, we're not happy with the price. Aha, now you can focus on the price. But you see, see <clears throat> when I, I've done these scripts so many times, and if you and if you you'll start to see these scripts are nothing but a series of questions. They're just drilling down. And so when someone answers, if I ask a question, and then they give me the fluff answers, well, we want to think it over. Okay, great. Well, what is it you need to think about? Is it the market? So, so remember, there's only two questions they want answered. How much money am I getting, and can you get it? So I address. Do you feel that I can sell your home? Yeah. Okay. So number two question is now resolved. So then it's got to be number one question. How much money am I getting? They're not happy with the price. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Go back to four. Go back to let the number four then, right? 
Well, yeah, or, or just find out what price they have in mind. But the reality is, no, well, until they bring it up. So then, and, and here's the thing. If they're highly motivated and they want to go, and I can't beat them down on, not even the right beat them down. That's not the right word. If I can't get them to see how to price the property properly at, at the listing appointment, and, and I know the motivation is high. In other words, they're selling their home. I'm going to take it overpriced. The goal is to get it properly priced up front just to make life simpler, okay? However, I'm not going to walk away because of the price. I'm going to list it and then work on beating them up on the price, you know, and because that's even one of the other one of the other scripts. Let me find that one there. Um, I have a friend in the business. Another, another agent said they can get me more money, right? <clears throat> so, listen, I can appreciate that. And what you probably don't understand is this. An agent that will list your property overpriced assumes they can take the listing now and then start beating you up on the price week after week after week after week. Is that what you want? Well, who would? So they're afraid to tell you the truth up front. Rhonda, do you want the truth? Of course you do. Let's do the right thing and simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? <clears throat> so you can go into that price. You can go into that script. <clears throat> if, so you've got to flush it out, but I promise you there's only two questions. How much money am I getting and can you get it? And if you've identified that it's not you, they feel that your marketing plan is good, well, then it's a price. Then you got to focus on the price. You got to get them. You got to get them into the price. <clears throat> you got to have the price conversation. Does that make sense? Yep. Makes sense. All right. So it's eight thirty. I got to get running. But thanks for joining. Great. By the way, both both of you did a great job. I just want you to know that right now, um, you're doing great jobs. The more you practice these, so the script books are on the website. <laughs> The, the scripts are to Baroque music. On the, you can download and listen to the scripts of the Baroque music. The more you learn these scripts, the, better, the more money you're going to make. It is that simple. Do not wing this. This is a business. You are a sales professional. These are sales scripts. These are dialogue. They're not meant to be read like a robot. They're meant to internalize. The best example I ever use of an internalized script is Jack Nicholson in the movie A Few Good Men, where he gives the uh, you can't handle the truth speech, right? Now, do you think he got, you know, he may have had some liberty to collaborate with the, the director, but he takes that script and goes and learns it and then comes back and performs. Right. Do you get it? <clears throat> so, and then when you perform at his level, then you get $20 million a, a, a movie, right? I mean, but what is he getting paid to do? He's getting paid to internalize the script. And then when he said it, it sounded like him. Do you get this? Right. That's it. That's the deal. Internalize these scripts and perform. This is a performance. <clears throat> it's showtime. So you've got to learn the script to the movie. There's only 10 objections, right? Seriously, there's like 10 objections, right? There's 10A, there's 10, and, oh, no, that, they got a couple more now. They got 11, right? <clears throat> so 11, will you cut your commission? No. Any other questions? They go, no. Okay, great, sign the contract. <clears throat> so so anyway, so, um, and then here's the script for the agent that said they'll cut their commission. So another agent said they would. But anyway, so great job. Keep practicing. This takes time. It's not something you're going to learn overnight. I started studying these scripts in April of 1998. And you know what? They're the same scripts I studied back then. So nothing's changed. So anyway, okay, boys and girls, have a nice day. Thanks, Rob.